We put the nursery up and built the structures about three years ago. And we started a little bit small. We had what we would call traditional food plants and started propagating on a small scale some plants that were more important. So chia sage, because chia is one of our important food sources, as well as white sage. Here we had some row crops and grew pumpkins. So a traditional three sisters garden. We had um, beans, corn, and squash, lots of it. There's plenty of people growing native plants and they're doing a great job. But a lot of the native plants that we grow are specifically tailored to the cultural needs of the San Diego's Band of Chumash Indians. We're the only one growing some of these plants and we want to be able to provide these to the community. We had been collecting seed in Los Padres National Forest for quite a while and we had a seed bank of our traditional plants. This is absolutely phenomenal because we have, I don't know, I think close to 4,000 plants here. 60 different species of native traditional Chumash plants. And of course, we are producing the plants that are important to Chumash community. And to be able to have plants that they can then plant in their own gardens so that they can have access to the traditional plants and medicines. One of the great things about plants is beyond just, you know, how wonderful they are as organisms in themselves, they're really foot in the door that allows you to really understand more about the interconnectedness of things. Having the relationship with the plant allows you to further develop your relationship with everything else on Earth. You're actually helping these plants reproduce while getting something back from it. We want to give them the opportunity, but also the tools to raise those plants and establish those relationships with those plants themselves. I think people understand native plants are really drought tolerant, but understanding and building relationship with the plants is really, really vital. Acorns are one of the staple crops of Chumash people. It's a different flavor palette. You have to leach it. It's a different sort of way of harvesting than grains but it plays a similar role in kind of being one of those foundational food stuffs that people have. We grow a lot of food plants here and I would really love to work with other departments on the reservation to try to incorporate these food plants, whether it be the chia or the acorns or whatever it is into people's diets, even if it's just once a week to try to have native food. It would help people connect with their traditions and their ancestors through food, through this thing that is so human. This last year and a half, we have really focused on traditional propagation to see if we get better success using what was traditionally done in terms of exposure to fire and smoke. We do have great success using those methods with specific plants. Some seeds, to propagate and be successful, you have to burn them or they're not gonna grow. And that's something Chumash ancestors were probably doing when they were tending the plants here locally and throughout traditional territory. They were probably utilizing these methods to get the propagation of their traditional foods and medicine plants. And I do think that it is a stewardship practice and that we would not see the catastrophic fires that we're seeing uh, that have touched so many people personally. I think this is something that's really important on a large scale and not just traditional burning, but prescribed burning and having those fires come back, which haven't been practiced here in the Santa Barbara area in 50, 60 years. When grass burns, it's much easier to contain than to have something like brushy chaparral, which ignites trees and spreads a lot quicker. This is very, very different. Even though the fire could spread very quickly, you can burn grasses in a low, cool way and be able to contain your landscape. These grasses are deep-rooted. They have to be. They have to send their roots 
deep into the earth to be able to survive year round. I always kind of use it as a metaphor for how native people have survived and have deep roots, persevere through hard times. Because this is, can be a harsh climate here. It can be an eat-in also, but as we know with drought and with these heat waves, you have to have these deep roots to make it through it. I would really love for this nursery to have a lot of mother plants in the ground, especially rare and difficult to find plants, and have us and the community be tending them as a small scale version of what traditionally people would have done so that these plants will be a source that people can come and get seed from or cuttings from and, and you know propagate them far and wide. My dream for the future is to continue to propagate and grow these plants, to partner with organizations and agencies on restoration and education about how these native plants support their landscape and their environment. I think all of us kind of feel like these plants are our children in a way, you know, or they're our family, we nurture them, and we want them to find a, a good home where they're able to prosper and bring good things to those around them. Coming here and seeing all this life that you're responsible for, but you also you get to reap that reward of like being a parent, seeing these plants go from seed to making their own seeds. We have trees here that started from a little acorn or a little seed, and they'll be there hopefully for generations. There's something precious about uh, having a hand in that. When I'm here, I feel calm. I feel at home. I feel like I have a relationship to these plants and that we have to protect them and care for them and steward them. And we, as the original people here, it's our responsibility to do that.